Hey there, Ophiuchus. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to February. Yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're new here, hi, my name is Eric. It is so wonderful to meet you. Yes, please make sure to subscribe if you're new here and you haven't done so already. Smash that like that button for me. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. It gets more of these messages out to more people. So please, please, if you haven't done so already, if you would like to do so, please show your support by subscribing smashing that like button, leaving me a comment in the comment section down below, letting me know how this resonates for you. Share it with your friends. Yeah. Especially those of you who are new, who are identifying with Ophiuchan energy and people are looking for, you know, guidance and readings and whatnot, please, by all means, share this with your friends. Yeah. All right. Um, last little bit. If you are interested in getting a reading with me, a personal reading with me, whether that's for astrology or just for tarot, or maybe a combination of both, my information can be found in the description box below, along with some of the emails that I, or, sorry, some of the readings that I offer. Yeah. Go ahead and shoot me an email. My email is found in the description box below. Let me know you're interested in getting a reading and I would be very, very happy to get you all set up. Also, if you would like some extra content from me throughout the month, or if you just like to, uh, uh, you like a different way or a, a num uh, uh, another way, or maybe even a better way to support the channel, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. Lots of great stuff over there. Um, and it's really, really a family. So come join the family. Yeah. All right, Ophiuchus, we're going to do this, keep it the same format as last month. All right, for January. So first half of this reading is going to be me speaking to Ophiuchus Rising. Second half of the reading is going to be me doing just a big old general energy pull for the uh, energetic collective of Ophiuchus. So if you're not necessarily an Ophiuchus Rising, you're like a sun or a moon, that side of the reading may resonate more with you. Just keep it. I mean, the rising side could resonate for you as well, even if you're not an Ophiuchus Rising. Just keep in mind that when I'm speaking to Ophiuchus Rising and I'm looking at the chart here, if you're not an Ophiuchus rising, then the placements of things is just not going to be the same. It's not going to be accurate, but the energies may, the reading may, you know? So even if you're not Ophiuchus rising, you can watch the first half and get some good amount of value in it or from it. Second half is going to be the big old general card pull. Also, if you're a uh, cross watcher, the second half of the reading may resonate the most for you. All right. And as always, even though I don't really need to tell you Ophiuchus, because if you're here, watching a reading for an Ophiuchan, then you're down with sidereal, true sidereal astrology. But I'll just say true sidereal astrology here, not mainstream, not tropical. They're the same mainstream tropical and not Vedic. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Wait, oh, I'm sorry. Wait, hold on a second. I wanted to get started, but then I realized that I didn't have the chart prepared um, to show you guys on the screen. But anyway, I've got it. So Ophiuchus rising. Hey guys, happy February to you. So, um, keeping again, keeping in line with what we started talking about last month, you're really emerging right now is really what I'm feeling here for you. Uh, we're going to get into the chart in a second, but, um, as I was looking through the chart for you, I was seeing a very strong, I mean, there's a very strong second house focus for you right now. All of the main things that are happening in, in, uh, February are happening for the most part are happening in your second house. And this is your house of values. This is a house of money, your relationship to money, and sometimes how you make money. Uh, but overall, it's your house of values ruled by Taurus and Virgo, right? I'm sorry, not Virgo, Venus, okay? Um, but with this, I, I, and this is why your title for the month is Earthquake, because I was looking at your chart, feeling through your energy, seeking the guidance, and all of a sudden I started to hear a rumble. And from that rumble, I was getting like a bit of an earthquake type of energy. There's something coming out of the ground or there's something emerging. Okay. And the, the strength or the, 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 the size or whatever of whatever is emerging here, it, it varies, right? Cause remember this is a general reading. Okay. But there's definitely an energy of after moving through what you experienced in January in the sense of self-empowerment, especially when Pluto and the sun conjuncted mid January. Okay. Uh, uh, there was a sense of empowerment that was fused within you. Um, and there was a, a level of accepting who you are and what it is you stand for and who it is you truly are meant to be right. That was January. So now February now having 
accepted that or 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 gotten into alignment with that now there's something there's a new you emerging okay and it's coming up out of the ground and i got that image specifically from the second house focus here for you so let me show you that here you have the chart for Ophiuchus rising for February of 2022. And as you can see, like I said here, Ophiuchus, you have all of this energy here in your second house. We do have Mars and Venus that are going to be uh, linking up this month, ironically enough, right around Valentine's Day, okay? That's happening um, right now, these two, as of the 1st of February, these two are in your first house. Um, they may have actually crossed into, I feel like the conjunction between Mars and Venus may happen for you in your six, in your second house here. But you know what? Instead of just um, being all kinds of conjecture, like why don't we actually look? So let me advance the chart here a few days. It's either in your second house or at the very edge. Yeah, see, it looks, look, look at that. So, okay, there they go. They're going conjunct. This is February 14th. This, ironically enough, that's Valentine's Day. And here they are, damn, just about conjunct. Mars is at 17 degrees. Venus is at 18 degrees. We advance, this is the 14th. The 15th, bam, they're fully conjunct by the 15th, both at 18 degrees of Sagittarius. But as you can see here, Ophiuchus, this is happening literally right on the cusp of your first and second houses. So, okay. Uh, now in terms of that, that makes a whole lot of sense because not only is there a new sense of self that has come online for you, that is emerging, that is developing within this process, a lot of that has to do with your changing values and also i'm hearing your changing relationship to values so the fact that this conjunction between mars and venus that's happening this month happens actually right on the cusp of the first and second house for you makes perfect sense okay but look at all of this look at all of this energy that's happening within that's concentrated within your second house and i was very much getting an earth vibe from that again the second house is ruled by Taurus, okay? Taurus is an earth sign. Taurus is very much about nature and about, um, uh, you know, the plant and animal kingdom. Um, Taurus is a very like garden type of energy, gardening type of energy, and I'm a big gardener, okay? So, so uh, you'll find, if you're new to me, you'll find that a lot of my analogies come from the garden. But you feel like you're literally emerging out of this right now, and that's where I was getting this earthquake energy from. For some of you, this could be as massive, okay, as massive as a volcano, like coming up out of the earth and getting ready to erupt. For some of you, this kind of felt like you might have been rising from some sort of grave. Now, I'm not saying that anybody's out here, going out here doing like, you know, black magic or, or you know, uh, practicing necromancy or anything like that, but I did kind of get an image of you emerging in some cases for some of you again general reading but some of you do kind of feel like you're emerging from the grave from a grave and what i heard specifically is you're emerging from a grave that they put you in okay okay the whole deck is reversed but i'm going to take it like this um for a moment but um and then i and and i don't know if you're familiar with this movie but dark shadows uh johnny depp michelle pfeiffer uh chloe grace moretz um, I just, I just watched that movie for the first time about a week or so ago. I'm freaking obsessed with it. Like it's such an awesome movie. Uh, you know, it's a Tim Burton movie, right? And just like, he's just obviously a cinematic genius, but some of the, some of the shots, some of the nuance in that movie is just like, it's, it's such a work of art. It's such a masterpiece. But if you're not familiar with that movie, Johnny Depp's character was turned into a vampire and then was later, um, I, I mean, there's a whole story behind it, but ended up being thrown into a coffin. The coffin chained closed so he could not get out and then he was buried. And later on, um, two, uh, almost 200 years later, you know, there's a construction team working. I think they were trying to build a McDonald's and they basically uncovered his grave and that's how he was released. But I was, so think something like that. And I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, Ophiuchus, I literally heard rising from a type of grave, think dark shadows like, and I heard that someone put you in. 
Someone tried to cover you up. Someone tried to bury you. You've been, people have been trying to silence you. And if if you're new here and you didn't catch the January reading, go back and catch that January reading because that's literally what we were talking about for January, okay? And 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 that there is literally that energy of you emerging from this and standing up and saying out loud at the top of your lungs, "This is who I am. You're not going to keep me covered up any longer. I have surfaced, okay? And that's." That's really the image that I have for you here. And then for some of you, it could be as small as just like a seedling popping through the soil. You know, the seed had been planted and now relatively speaking, right around that seedling, there's a little bit of an earthquake happening because it's pushing its way out of the soil and emerging for it to reach the sun and be seen, right? Now, I do have some cards here that came out for you as I was channeling the energy of releasing or, or, or emerging from a, some, a, from a sort of grave that somebody put you in. All of the cards are reversed here. But this is referring to a specific individual or I'm hearing a type of individual or the type of individuals that you've been involved with that have helped kind of keep you out of the light, right? This is very, even though, you know, it's got a kind of a dark energy in terms of like rising from a grave, it was also feeling kind of like Phoenix from the ashes risen, all right? But what you have here is justice in reverse, the 10 of wands in reverse, the queen of swords in reverse, and the eight of wands. You know, okay, this is very much like that energy of the Dark Souls movie. So I am going to, I, I suggest, I highly suggest, if you haven't seen the movie already, even if this part of the reading doesn't resonate for you, but if you haven't seen the movie already, just go and watch it, just because it's 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 a great movie, okay? Um, but for others of you that this does resonate, again, I recommend that you go watch that movie. There could be some downloads, there could be some awarenesses you could come to by following through with that story. But part of the story is, spoiler alert, if you don't, if you, uh, oh, shoot. Well, I'm gonna get. Uh, the, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna give a little bit of the plot away because that's exactly what's coming through in this in this deck uh, in these cards here, especially with this Queen of Swords in reverse. Again, this could be an individual, a specific individual, like say your mother. I just heard, or it could just be the type of energy that you have been dealing with. But Johnny Depp's character, like I said, was turned into a vampire. He was turned into a vampire by a witch, who he denied. I mean, they were. They were getting down and dirty, but he didn't love her and he wasn't going to lie to her and tell her that he loved her when he didn't. So he told her the truth that pissed her off. She was a witch, just hello happened to be a witch. She turned him into a vampire. And later, and as time goes on, she works her magic, Queen of Swords in reverse, in vindictive ways to get the townspeople around her, on her side of the story and that's how they effectively the town came to the home pitchforks and torches in hand and all that like the whole nine yards scooped him up threw him in the coffin and the whole town buried him down there right the whole town was against him so either there is somebody here queen of swords has been communicating ways or taking certain actions um Claiming that there have been certain burdens or just, just misspeaking, okay? Lying, queen of swords in reverse, eight of wands in reverse, 10 of wands in reverse, creating a false narrative that there's something about your condition or there's something about you being around or you being involved somehow that was overburdensome and tiring and we've just gotta do something about this. Justice in reverse, okay? Take this as it resonates. This doesn't necessarily have to be a specific person. It could just be an energy. It could just feel like what you're dealing with. On the other hand, here you are at the bottom of the deck, Ophiuchus, Queen of Pentacles. Now, yes, these are queens. So these are feminine energies, but they don't have, it doesn't have to, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's not indicative of like a man or a woman. It's just the energies that they, these cards represent. The Queen of Pentacles represents a very hardworking, caring, loving, compassionate individual, very solid, grounded, stable in who they are, abundant. You know, they've got their own thing going on. The Queen of Pentacles doesn't have the bag. She is the bag, right? 
uh, and that's kind of who you are. And the queen of pentacles is the type of energy to not really involve themselves in situations that are not reciprocal because she has plenty of other things to worry about, plenty of other things to be responsible for rather than fucking around here with you while you're not even pulling your end of the weight, right? So there's definitely a queen of pentacles vibe to you right now. Um, but I feel like this queen of pentacles vibe for you, Ophiuchus, is self-sufficiency. And I'm hearing being sure of yourself, okay? Um, loving yourself enough to emerge from the depths. Underneath the queen of pentacles at the bottom of the deck right now, you do have the world to the tower. To the three of pentacles, to the nine of pentacles. Yeah. Okay, to the queen of wands. And the king of swords okay but really here you go this is you ophiuchus queen of pentacles the world and the tower and what i'm hearing here for you is you have the self-awareness and maybe even the self-respect to bring certain things to an end to bring certain things to a close uh, for some of you ophiuchus i don't really even feel like you're necessarily trying to bring anything down the tower here i don't feel like for the most part, it isn't even necessary for you to really lift a finger. Your energy, your vibration speaks for itself, creates this tower moment for for itself. I really do feel like this tower moment here, okay, that is influenced by you emerging as this self-sufficient, self-loving energy. The tower moment here that's being created is being created because you are in an energetic vibration to end certain cycles, the world. And then that tower moment is kind of happening for the people around you, especially specifically this individual or these individuals or this energy, Queen of Swords in reverse, that has been lying, cheating, stealing, backstabbing, okay? After, only after their own agendas, turning people against you, uh, uh, lying about you, lying on your name, things like that. I mean, like, it, it, again, it just naturally happens, Ophiuchus. You don't have to do anything else other than stand in your power, stand in your truth. I mean, if we're going to keep up with this analogy here of you rising from a grave, so to speak, don't you think that when this individual here got the townspeople against you, had you chained up, thrown in a coffin, and buried, right? Hopefully never to be seen from or heard from again, okay? And then fast forward about 200 years, 197 to be exact in the movie, okay? Fast forward about 200 years, and now all of a sudden, here you come out of the grave. And I wanted to say, like, nothing even happened. Yes, like, nothing even happened, seemingly, but, like, so a hell of a lot more powerful now than you were back then. Imagine the shock on those people's faces. I'm pretty sure we just buried you. Yeah, I'm sure you did, says Ophiuchus, but here I am. And my power speaks for itself. Now what you got to say? Nothing. Jaws have basically, like they basically, these people might have might as well have just like dislocated their jaw the way it's hanging, for, gaping from their from their face right now. You don't have to do anything else, Ophiuchus, than just show up. And your energy changes everything, is what I'm hearing. I heard also, I just heard the awareness becomes clear. Okay? Just how deceptive someone was being, or the lying, the cheating. This I want to I want to get a little bit more on this. What is what can, what else can you get? Death. Transformation. The old cycles are really just ending, Ophiuchus. Death to the Eight of Swords. Okay. Yeah. Anything? Else? Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Why that, though? Ah, aha, aha, aha. Okay, Ophiuchus. So, all right, cool. So moving forward with this now, I wanted to get a little bit more on this energy here, right? And we got, death was the first card that came out. Now with that Ophiuchus, you do have the eight of swords. So this is literally you transforming out of or emerging out of some sort of prison. I'm hearing some sort of mental imprisonment. Absolutely, the eight of swords. But then also keeping with our analogy here, right? Our dark shadows analogy, the eight of swords would be that physical prison. 
sometimes the eight of swords can actually mean it, incarceration you know being thrown into an actual jail oftentimes it would mean that if it comes out directly connected to justice not in this situation even though we do have justice here it's kind of a different energy but whether it be physical imprisonment mental imprisonment doesn't matter you're emerging out of this okay you're transforming out of this you're healing out of this there you go with that you have the star and i kind of want to say here ophiuchus you are the star you are the shining light for some of you i just heard you are the example to lead that others are led by whether you actively try to do that or not i think i feel like in most cases you you don't even have to lick the finger in terms of that again there's a strong energy here ophiuchus of you just needing to do nothing else but stand in your truth in your power and shine your light do what naturally comes to you you don't have to do anything extra you don't have to be anything extra quite frankly ophiuchus your energy can be quite extra a lot of the time anyway uh interesting fact somebody left a comment in the on the ophiuchus reading for january i unfortunately <clears throat> i'm so sorry i don't remember your name and i didn't look this up before i started reading here but i'm being i'm being guided to talk about it but i wasn't really sure of what days to do your reading, Ophiuchus, because your ruling planet is Chiron, which is an asteroid, technically, is Chiron, uh, the wounded healer. And Chiron isn't associated with a certain day of the week like all the other planets are. But, but I was also talking about how in me sitting with your energy, Ophiuchus, over all this time and channeling for you and just getting to know your energy, you're very healing, but you're also fairly chaotic and you're very extreme sometimes. Um, like I, I'm hearing like really driving the point home and a lot, uh, there's this, there's this chaotic extremism to you. That's really, it's not like you're just some, you're not, you're not, uh, you're not a loose cannon. Okay. You're not a ticking time bomb, but you're extremely powerful and you can get into some pretty rageful energies, but not without reason. Okay, Ophiuchus is not that type of energy to just go popping off because he feels like it, because like Aries or Scorpio or some shit like that, right? No, there's a reason for it. If Ophiuchus is really popping off, there's a reason for it. But there's such, you are so, like your energy just feels so powerful, right? And somebody, this person left a comment saying, like kind of attributing your energy to Pluto. Um, actually attributing your energy to one of Pluto's moons. Again, I don't remember the name of it, but when I read through that and I let that process and marinate for a minute, I was like, you are an absolute genius, my friend, because your energy for me closely resembles the energy of Pluto, which is extremely powerful, extremely powerful. Okay. Uh, and extremely change, or I mean, it could bring a lot of change. It can bring a lot of change, but that's really the raw power of Pluto. And so because of that, now I'm doing your readings on Pluto days. Okay. Why was I telling you all that? <laughs> I don't remember, but there, I, I also, I wanted to tell you that anyway. So there you go. But um, you are the star here. Phoenix from the ashes risen. Okay. You are the healer. You are a healer. Sometimes in some pretty extreme ways. Also, death here is associated with Scorpio, who is also associated with Pluto. So there you go. Draw on this Plutonian energy to really help drive you forward, to really help continue to break you out of this mental imprisonment. Now, Eight of Swords energy. With all of that said, Ophiuchus, overall energy for you right now is the Four of Cups. And I'm like, whoa, what's that for? So Spirit is coming through with a message for you here. Four of Cups. This is your reluctance to be involved. Six of Cups. I'm sorry, Six of Pentacles, Six of Cups, Seven of Wands. You're being asked to be as compassionate as possible. Which I don't feel like you really want to do. Given some of the circumstances some of you are emerging out of at this point. And this is very Queen of Pentacles of you. Uh, because the Queen of Pentacles, when she's not so positively aspected, the Queen of Pentacles has a tendency to become very resentful. And I definitely feel like, Ophiuchus, you probably have some really good reasons to be fairly resentful. 
I don't want to discredit any of that. Please, if you are feeling resentful, allow yourself to feel through that, but also don't feel through at, through that just to revel in it. And don't let this Plutonian power that I feel is so strongly connected to your energy, don't let that make you into a super villain. And I mean like, don't, don't let that, don't let that, um, what's the phrase? What's the word I'm looking for? Don't let that power blind you. Don't allow your resentment to get so deeply rooted within you that now you are extremely dark and are creating more damage and destruction than you are healing. Um, but I feel like some of you don't want to do this. You don't want to be balanced. You don't want to be reciprocal, but like you don't want to, you don't want, you don't necessarily, you're, you're resentful of the people around you. In some cases for you, Ophiuchus, this does require a level of reconciliation. At least being able to work together on maybe the mundanest of levels. I'm not saying you have to be best friends with these people either now or again, but at least try not to allow yourself to get too caught up in resentment. However, trust how you feel through this process, but understand that harboring and acting from a well, <laughs> a reserve, <laughs> a reserve or a well of resentment, that is not healthy. That's not good. That's really not going to get you where you want to go. You do not want to be using or leading with any sort of resentful energy. I just heard that is not the power of your purpose. That is egoic. So try your best to forgive and to heal. And for many of you that are dealing with some of the strongest need to heal or forgive here, please remember and understand that forgiveness and healing is not about the other person at all. It's about you. It's for you. It's so that you can release yourself from that energetic dynamic and go on your way. Okay. So even if you're sitting here looking at me six ways sideways, like I've got 15 heads talking about, I don't want to, I don't want to reconcile with these people. Don't do it for them. And then you do it for yourself. And some, in some cases you really don't even have to do it face to face, or you don't even have to confront them, or you don't even have to actually say anything to them. You just have to work on releasing the resentment. I'm also hearing releasing the fear as well, because a lot of the resentment that some of you are feeling is from, is based in fear. Excuse me. Uh, but work on that alone. Work on that with yourself. Again, remember the, the, the forgiveness is not for other people. Okay. It's for you. And the more you hold on to the resentment and the fear, the more hurt and damage you cause, yes, for other people, but also for yourself, okay? Don't let people live rent-free in your head or in your emotional body as well, right? All right, any other closing, any other messages for Ophiuchus rising here, please, Spirit? Any other messages for Ophiuchus? Yo, some of you really do not want to reconcile. Some of you really do not even want to accept. I heard, for some reason, I heard accept ownership of an apology. For some of you, maybe you have an apology you gotta make. For others, there could be there a heavily, there could be a heavy dose of apologies that you are needing to. Let me not say it that way. The way I'm hearing it is the universe. We really want you to accept some of these apologies that may come towards you. We really do. This is all about healing, learning, and unlearning, right? It doesn't, again, it doesn't have, it doesn't mean that you have to be best friends with them. It doesn't mean that you have to, y'all are now going to go key key down at the bar down the block because you know, you're cute now. You're cool now. No, fuck no. In some cases, but. There's, but resent, but, but the healing is really in the resentment, like healing the resentment. But what you have, what you have here that's come out for you guys is the four of swords with the page of cups, but the page of cups is in reverse. And what I'm getting with this for some of you is focus on why 
you are not, you are so not willing to accept some sort of, of apology or accept some sort of reconciliation because that you will find when you really focus on understanding why you are so res resistant to accepting any form of reconciliation or apology, even if it's on purely an energetic level, if you focus on understanding that, then you'll see that actually those are some triggers that you really, really, really need to work on healing. And you're ready to do that, four of wands. So this is a big old page of cups sandwiched in between some four of swords, four of wands type of lovely, delicious bread. But I, I keep hearing Ophiuchus and your subtitle for this reading, I guess, should be re like something about resentment because... Oh, damn it. I was going to go to the post office today to pick something up. And I'm sorry, you guys, this is a total sidebar, but we're friends here. We're family, so like, whatever. But I, I was going to go to the post office today. Somebody sent me a new deck of cards that I'm really excited to work with. But it's Martin Luther King Day. And I, like, some of y'all are looking at me like, Shh, you forgot it's Martin Luther King Day? Revoke his black card. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just not focused in that realm. I'm focused in this realm, trying to talk to you guys from the cosmos, okay? Give me a break. But my friend just told me that the the post office is closed today. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Page of Cups, focus on the resentment because the points where you find that you are really resistant to accepting some sort of apology or accepting some sort of new emotional reality between the two of you, for some of you, this actually is, you might have a relationship or be able to build a better relationship with this person now or these people now or whatever. But the resentment is the key here, Ophiuchus. And like I was just saying <laughs> before I went on my tangent, it kind of feels like your subtitle should be Focus on the resentment, heal the resentment, release the resentment, because that's really what's standing in your way right now. And when you focus on understanding why you're so resentful, the triggers will come up. Those triggers, pay attention to them because those are the parts that need the healing most. And again, Ophiuchus, you are ready to do this, Four of Wands, okay? Um... That's it for the tarot. I do have one last thing that I wrote down here that I want to I want to tell you. Um, oh, by the way, as I was just reading through that, Four of Swords, Page of Cups in Reverse, Four of Wands upright. Again, we're back to the Queen of Pentacles. Yes, look at this. To the Four of Pentacles, to the Eight of Cups, to the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, Ophiuchus. Yes, okay, Ophiuchus. To the Three of Swords, to the Three of Wands. The Queen of Pentacles is the resentful energy. The four of pentacles is you staying rooted in where you are, is kind of like a hoarding energy. What's this? Oh, wait, no, this way. Okay, you have the eight of cups. You need to walk away from this, but instead you're hunkering down in this. And I understand why. I understand why, because this is familiar, because this, is a, this has been a safe space for you, but you've got to leave that safe space behind if you're going to change the wheel of karma for you in terms of this heartbreak. Wheel of Fortune, Three of Swords. So really focus on the resentment, Ophiuchus, all right? Now, the last thing that I want to say for you here before I move on with the rest of the reading is that Saturn. Now, for in February, Saturn is created, creating a checkpoint for us, okay? There's a ch conjunction between the Sun and Saturn that's happening in February. Nothing big, nothing major in terms of, like, you know, aspects go because any conjunction with the sun is going to happen at least once a year, right? Certain retrogrades, if there are certain retrogrades placed in the right way, like right place, like say Mercury goes retrograde and it first crosses the sun once, then goes back and crosses again during the retrograde and then crosses it back again once it goes direct. Okay, that could happen. But the sun conjuncts with everything at least once throughout the course of the year. So a sun-Saturn conjunction, really not that big of a deal. But for the month of February. With everything, all the change, all the healing that's happening for us at this time period, it feels like Saturn is making a roadblock for some, a rest stop for others. Feels like a rest stop for you. Saturn feels very, 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 very unconditionally supportive of you right now. Saturn feels like that proud papa 
that's looking at their child. And I heard, I, I actually heard Saturn ask you, are you ready? Because you're about to go out there into the world, big boy, big girl, man, you did it. Okay. So, I, I mean, there's really nothing big I wanted to channel that for you I or wanted to tell you there. I just, I, I channeled that feeling. So I wanted to bring it forward to you because it's, it's, I am hearing it's supposed to be encouragement. Don't, don't fear Saturn. I, and also what I heard in this energy for you, Ophiuk, is in, in relation to Saturn. Saturn's not here stepping up saying, let me check your work because I don't think you're going to be able to move forward. No, 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 no. Saturn is not saying anything near that to you because, and I quote, you've been through enough. It's time to move on now. It's time to get this healing underway. All right. So uh, if you haven't done so already, check out the February live stream that I did on my channel where I really go dive deep into the conjunction that Saturn makes with the sun and how that could potentially be affecting us for the month of February. Also, even though I do these individual readings for the signs, also keep an eye out for just the group collective monthly session where I really talk about the big collective energies for the month and then I break it down for each sign, you know, as I go through, depending on what is going on for them in the chart. Yeah. All right. Ophiuchus, I am wanting to getting a, I'm wanting to get a closing Oracle message for you. We're going to go with the magic unicorn Oracle. Yeah. Three shuffles here. This is one. This is two. Oops. This is two. And this is three. All right, closing Oracle guidance for my Ophiukins for February 2022. There it is right there. You have two cards here, Ophiukins, I think more maybe. Card number 22, which is a master number, is your overall energy here. Manifest your dreams. Focus on your vision, seek satisfaction and contentment. Underneath that, you do have card number five, new opportunities. Declutter your life, glimpse a magical doorway. And actually, with the energy of decluttering your life, I'm literally going, being brought back to the rising out of the grave um, image and like literally brushing the dirt off of you. Declutter. Go on, brush your shoulders off. Declutter, right? All right, cool. And so your final cards here, strong seven vibration. You have card number seven, and then you have card number 34. And that's very much feeling like it's in alignment with what Saturn feels like or what Saturn's energy feels like towards you right now. Again, you've been through enough. You're ready to proceed. It's You're ready to move to the next level. And that's very much a seven vibration. Seven is just like five, right? It's an odd number, so it represents change. And oftentimes we think five is challenging, but we haven't seen anything until we get to seven. Seven is a very lucky number, but luck is not given, it's created. You create your own luck. And often with the challenges and tribulations that come with the level, the number seven, there's also a strong level of wisdom that comes with the vibration of seven. And that's where we get, we cross into the realm of being lucky. You're not lucky. I mean, you are, but technically it's like you're, you prepared for this. So luck is really just a level of you being in the right place, having prepared for something. And with all the trials and tribulations you've gone through up until, up until this point, what it is you're emerging out of, yeah, you, you prepared for this, all right? You gained some serious wisdom being, you know, scooped up by the townspeople, locked in a coffin, and then buried underground for damn near 200 years, right? Now, in your case, Ophiuchus, technically, Ophiuchus has been buried from the consciousness of society, of humanity, for like about two, 3,000 years, right? When the Babylonians decided that you weren't relevant, so they just took you out. I really want you guys to watch that movie. If you haven't watched that movie, watch it. If you have, watch it again, okay? Anyway, card number seven. Listen to your heart. Awaken psychic abilities. 
tune into the infinite. And then you have card number 34, Cosmic Pearl. Expand your psychic gifts. Open the gate to the angelic realms. So the universe really wants you to tune in to it, to the guidance that it has for you. The universe is speaking to you directly, has been speaking to you directly all along. There's no reason for you to seek external sources anymore. Well, I hope that doesn't create a mass exodus where now you're like, all right, cool. Well, I'll, I'm, not, I'm not watching your videos anymore. Yikes. But like, you get what we're saying. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to pause for a moment and I'm going to switch gears. And then we're going to get into the second half of this reading, which is just going to be your big, all big old overall energy pull. Yeah. Stay tuned. Howdy, Ophiuchus. All right, guys. So welcome to the second half of this reading where we are going to be speaking to the big old collective energy of Ophiuchus. Yes. So this is Ophiuchus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or any other placement that you have within the constellation of Ophiuchus that you are curious about. Yes. Whether that is a certain planetary placement or a certain house placement. Okay. Um, so this is for everybody. Yeah. Big gold, general collective reading. And for the cross watcher, this may be most relevant. Yes. All right. Ophiuchus, I'm going to get started with the tarot here. Five shuffles and we'll see what we got for you. Yeah. Here we go. One. Two. Three. For my Ophiuchus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for February of 2022. This is four. And this is five. Alrighty. So let's see. What messages do we have for Ophiuchus this month? Nothing came out, and they literally just told me, go watch the Ophiuchus Rising reading. All right, Spirit, but can't we have like a little bit more? Please. Anything else you want to say to Ophiuchus? So the Ophiuchus Rising part of this reading, section of this reading, is probably going to be very relevant to you. Whether you're an Ophiuchus Rising or not, it doesn't matter, all right? But we do have some messages here. We do have some messages coming out. That's good. All right. Okay. So three of swords, pain and heartbreak, even though, um, in your title, the, the main title for you this month is in fact, uh, emerging. So that's why I got the, the energy or the, 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 um, the title is earthquake because it feels like there's something you're, you're emerging, you're rising out of something. For some of you, it's like there's an, a volcano uh, 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 coming up out of the ground and is going to be erupting soon. For others of you, you know, you're just a little seedling that's, that's you know, been doing its thing and now is finally starting to breach the surface to reach the sun. For others of you, there is a very strong energy of being, um, uh, of coming out of a grave that others may have put you in. Very much like how the general Ophiuchus energy was completely ignored up until recently, right? Again, go watch the Ophiuchus rising part of this video because that's where I really described that. But um, resentment is the other key word for you right now. So as you're emerging, as you're rising, as you are coming up, Phoenix out of the ashes, risen and all that kind of energy, there is a need for you to let go, release and heal. Overall energy for you here is the three of swords, to the Eight of Swords, to the Wheel of Fortune, to the Queen of Pentacles. Oh my God, this is literally the same cards that came out for Ophiuchus Rising. If you are not an Ophiuchus Rising, it doesn't matter. Just take it with a grain of salt, take the messages that come through and apply them to your life as they, because this is literally the same reading. The same exact cards are coming out. So you really want to go watch the first half of that. But with that, I'll explain a little bit. Um, you need to let go of the resentment. Because the resentment and the fear, I do feel like there's fear involved with some of the resentment that you're feeling. The resentment and the fear is keeping you in this cycle of feeling trapped, eight of swords, 
Three of Swords, fear, uh, uh, pain, and heartbreak. It's keeping you in this cycle that keeping that's keeping you trapped and is keeping you from receiving what it is you're meant to receive. Underneath the Queen of Pentacles here is the Ace of Pentacles, and then the Tower and the Eight of Cups. You guys, except for the Ace of Pentacles here, the Ace of Pentacles didn't come out in the first half. Everything else that I'm looking at at the bottom of the deck are the exact same cards, Ophiuchus. Okay. So go watch the first half of this reading. Now, the cards that have come out here officially on the table, first card was the Seven of Wands. Second card here, second card here you have is the Sun, which is beautiful. And finally, oh, the Ace of Cups. That's beautiful too. Defend yourself, stand your ground, stand in your truth. But with this Ace of Cups here, Ophiuchus, I'm hearing love yourself enough to let go of the resentment. I, I, I also explained in the, in the Ophiuchus Rising part of this that I've, uh, with the help of a lovely uh, viewer here, of, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but someone after what I was talking about last month about how, you know, I don't know what day to do your reading because your ruling planet or your ruling asteroid is not really associated with a certain day of the week, blah, blah, blah. This person left a comment talking about how they kind of feel like um, Ophiuchus energy would be closely related to like one of the moons of Pluto. And as I was, I was reading through that, I was like, wow, that makes so much sense because Ophiuchus is such a wild and very dramatic and very powerful, powerful, powerfully healing energy. Like Ophiuchus is absolutely a force to be reckoned with. And that's very much how I kind of see Pluto. So I feel a lot of Plutonian energy for you, a lot of Plutonian influence. And as a result, I decided to do your readings on Pluto days, which happens to be on a Monday. Uh, but with all of that Plutonian power, raw power that you have access to on a regular basis, love yourself enough to let go of the resentment because it's the resentment that can really drive you into that super villain archetype which, like I've said in the past, is often driven by pain and resentment. Don't allow that to happen to you, Ophiuchus. You are too powerful to let your power be wasted in that way, okay? So allow yourself to release the ego, the fear, and drop the resentment. Love yourself enough to stand in your truth, stand in your power, and to know that you don't have to get revenge. Vengeance is never a good thing, Ophiuchus. It hurts other people, but it also hurts you, mainly in terms of damaging your karma. And we don't want you to have to deal with any of that any longer. So face your fears, face the resentment. This doesn't mean that you have to confront people, okay? You need to work on healing though. You need to work on forgiving. Don't shoot the messenger. But also remember that forgiveness is more for yourself than anybody else. Okay. Forgiveness allows you to be released energetically so you can move on to your life in your life and, and receive what it is you're truly meant to receive here. Okay. With that said, then I'm just going to move to the, the closing Oracle guidance here because this is literally the same reading as the first half. So go watch the first half again, regardless as to whether you're an Ophiuchus rising or not, the message is still the same. The general message is still the same. So go watch that. Yeah. I'm going to get you some closing Oracle guidance here. From the Oracle of the Seven Energies. Five shuffles. This is one. Two. Closing Oracle Guidance from my Ophiukins. This is three. Four. And five. Alrighty, Ophiuchus, closing oracle guidance for you here. Okay. Yeah, you're really in the you're really in the healing phase right now. You're really in an in-between phase right now. And that makes perfect sense. You're rising up. Phoenix from the ashes risen. Uh the 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 seedling that's for, that's um breaking through the soil for the first time uh to greet the sun coming up out of a grave, whatever, you're in a transitional period, land in between, or the land between. You're in that middle space, 
right there, okay? And, and a requirement here is in order for you to move forward, in order for you to cross that bridge into the next phase of your life, there is a requirement. And that requirement is to release the resentment. However that, whatever that means for you. If that means you actually do have to have some conversations with someone, you know, you need to reconcile with some people. I'm not saying go out there and read people a riot act. Okay, be very, be very careful. You're a very powerful individual. Be very, very careful. But it also doesn't have to be that, okay? Whether you're reconciling with yourself, whether you're releasing the resentment, the fear within, like whatever. The healing, the forgiveness is for you so that you can move forward from that in-between land to the next phase of your life. And the card that has come out here officially on the table is card number seven, a deep breath. Just breathe. For some of you, you really kind of need to relax. Interestingly enough, I'm feeling really tired today. Not like overly tired. I just feel really sleepy. Like I feel like I need to take a nap. And I'm wondering if that's part of your energy, Ophiuchus. Because I know I've been very conscious all morning that I was going to be channeling your energies today and doing your reading. So I wonder, I wonder if some of you guys are feeling exhausted. Like, like you just got eight hours of sleep, but you still want to take a nap. That would be a result of this emerging process that's happening for you right now. Or that has been happening for you. It takes a lot of energy it takes a lot of energy for the seedling to pop out of the seed and grow roots enough for it to reach and breach the surface. It takes a lot of energy for the butterfly to come out or to emerge from the cocoon. It takes a lot of energy to claw yourself up out of a grave. So honor that within yourself. Take a deep breath and rest and allow yourself to heal. And by allowing yourself to heal, what you're actually doing is releasing the resentment and the fear that's keeping you bogged down, making it so that you are too heavy to fly. Baby, you were meant to fly. So take a deep breath, allow yourself to rest and heal in this, in this land between so that you can move forward with great big love and ears wide open because there are endless possibilities, Ophiuchus, and that is coming directly from your higher self, the royal you. Okay. All right. So there you have it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. If you are new here, please make sure to consider subscribing. Yeah. Smash that like button for me. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Share this with your friends and family. Join us over on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. If you would like to get a reading with me, if it's just an astrology reading or tarot or a combination of both, hit me up. My email can be found in the description box below. Just send me an email letting me know that you are interested in getting a reading and I would love to get you all hooked up there. Yeah. With that said, I hope you have a fantastic month. I love you guys so very much. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of March. Yes. Excellent. Take care. Mm -hmm. ah, bye. <laughs>